So it is literally a couple of seconds later and <laughs> I honestly can't wait to cut with this knife. Now, the box is nice. I remember that the box from the Blue Sheep H6 was a bit different. These are a bit sturdier. That one was also a bit taller. These are actually are actually pretty nice. And that one did not come with a microfiber cloth. I most boxes I don't keep. And this one's just gonna be in that. My my wife's gonna get the microfiber cloth and that's it. All right. Our usual, our usual, my usual cardboard box. And um, let's see how it does, considering the thickness. I mean, when you have a knife which is thin enough behind the edge, even if it's not as sharp, the, where did I put it? I had it here. The manly peak, the wasp's locking uh, cousin, brother, whatever you want to call it, was 0.2 millimeters behind the edge, but it had no edge. It had literally a flat edge. And that one still cut cardboard just because it has a good geometry. Now this one does actually have an edge. And <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you can watch my other videos if uh, you want to compare. And I can tell you right now, this one cuts very, very well. Just because of the thickness, I shouldn't have measured it. I should have just uh, let it surprise me by how well it cuts. <laughs> that would have been a nice one. I should have tricked myself into it. So let's see two. And now that's four and eight. Simply because of the the thinness of the grind it just went much easier i mean i'm sure the fact that it's sharp had something to do with it but the handle is not the most comfortable handle it has these uh sharp corners right here which i will probably sand that i, I don't know i mean if i did not uh, get rid of this frn jimping i might not get rid of this i don't know right like this it can be a bit uncomfortable pushing. Oh, I did. I do have a little sting here. I don't know from what that came, but it does hurt a bit. But if you just slice a bit, then it just. My goodness, it is. I think the the Sokoki impressed me and its cutting ability this much, but, but I think this one might actually take it. Take the Sokoki and the. The Chevalier. This is just a nice, very nice slicer. Goodness. I mean, this is all cross grain. How many? I don't know. Two, four, six, eight. If you just slice a bit, then, then you have no issues cutting through this cardboard. It is superb. <laughs> I like it. Can you tell that I like it? I, I can really tell that I like it. Just close to it. <laughs> there is something to be said about uh, a thin blade, which is also narrow. You can control it very much in the cut. This is why one of my favorite bushcraft knives is the Mora 510, because it has a thin, narrow blade. And you can actually work wood very well with that. And in just daily use, you can, uh, like I said, do stuff like this. I mean, this is not the hardest of cardboards, but still. I must say I, I'm pleasantly surprised, very pleasantly surprised. It's 
not uh, make too much of a mess here. Very pleasantly surprised. I mean, its biggest flaw is that it is a slip joint. Um, I was looking at the Metamorph. That one is, is actually a liner lock and still has the, the same, but I don't think the Metamorph looks as good as this one. This is just, it impressed me. And with the, with the fact that it, it has such a nice and thin grind, uh, it impressed me a bit more. For tasks like this, this is really nice. This is just jute. Yeah, it's really not an issue. For some reason, I am a bit um, nervous whenever I, I cut with a slip joint like this. I mean, it feels Maybe it's just my brain telling me that this is somehow fragile uh, because, well, you can just give it a little push and it unlocks. Other than that, I mean, if you can, I'm imagining you can push quite hard down on this blade and nothing will happen. So, but and just me knowing that I have to be a bit weary of it is uh, enough to, yeah, make me a bit skittish. Let's see how it goes through Sissel. And once again, this is probably more front end, sh front edge sharpness, and just a bit of grind. Uh, cutting rope like this, or paper, it, well, cutting rope, especially if it's thicker, it might have a bit to do with geometry and edge angle. It always has to do something with edge angle, but um, the geometry of cutting, for example, this rope, this is really hard rope. I've seen people cut this on rope, and it seems they there is a bit softer, like this jute rope that I'm using and I've noticed there are different types of sisal rope this one is really hard so I mean okay this is a medium sharp knife right but you're not touching you're not you're not working the grind through this at all you know one thing which I, I failed to mention in the first look video on the other part is the jimping the fact that there there is no jimping i love it <laughs> a knife without jimping is just uh a steak without ketchup as it should be <laughs> and yeah I love the fact that it doesn't have jimping. Um, I mean, some jimping is okay uh, for certain knives, you know, but f for other knives, sometimes, I, and I think I got this this little uh, wound here, this little point where it stuck me. I think uh, the jimping on, on the Maddox 2 made it worse somehow. I don't know where I got this, probably from a splinter, but this is really that those kind of uh, small wounds, like when you get a when you get a splinter, and it doesn't really hurt, but it's really annoying. That's the kind of uh, injury this is. Now this is not no, no, nothing impressive because right now we're talking front end sharpness and it's not going to have that much. But for comfort in hand in this position, this is really nice. And you can actually put your finger here and. Uh, this little um, indentation here, I understand this is uh, um, done for many of these of uh, the models which Ostop Hell designs, um, has this little indentation here. I don't see it as a detriment, it doesn't really help me. Um, it looks good, it looks good. And rather than having jimping there, I prefer having this because it does something to for the for the design and it has such a nice nicely rounded spine i mean like i said I, i'm not looking into a uh, slip joint as i am looking into some other folders but just by doing a little cutting i can tell you yes it might be a bit uncomfortable because these corners are a bit sharp 
but the spine is nice and rounded and uh, you know the, the back spring is nice and polished and rounded you get the lanyard spacer uh, the lanyard pin here to run you i don't like that i don't like lanyard holes uh, and I think this is great that they did it like this for people who like lanyards. They can have that. And for me, I don't have to have a big hole in the handle. So this is just opening me up to, to uh, getting more of uh, his designs. I mean, I like the knife. I was, I liked it pleasantly surprised, but after I've, uh, I've noticed how thin the grind is, that yeah and just bearing down on the knife yeah just feels comfortable i mean you have to bear down on this really hard to go through the quarters like this and it still feels comfortable you could round out these corners But yeah, the fact that it has a rounded spine, superb. I'm just trying not to make a mess. And let's go to a bit of wood. Now, when you're cutting wood, much like cardboard, is when uh, you will really take advantage of uh, the cutting geometry. Because even if you have a, a steeper edge angle, the geometry really helps you with. Now, I've chose this wood. This is um, kind of a tough wood to cut because this will happen. <laughs> See that? When you get a deep bite, the wood will squeeze the blade and this will happen. But you can take pretty decent bites out of this wood. That is because of the geometry. I like it. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm glad I didn't get the compact. I think I would have liked the compact, but I liked. I, I like. I mean, the compact would have been much better for suited for as a as a gentleman's pocket knife. You know, small cutting task. But I think I can enjoy using this as a slip joint for a long time i mean i i, I use victor knox knives off and on not very much i use the the wasp i use this one but i used it with a with a locking pen just because it's so much fun and lately i got this one which is also another one that has surprised me and talking about nail nicks this is the one model where they actually make the nail neck functional. This is the first functional nail neck. It does not bother me. And I think I don't have the most sensitive fingernails, but I know a lot of people who have sensitive fingernails and uh, even they have no issues, had no issues with it. So yeah, this model, this is a, a pretty good one as a slip joint, you know, I liked it. And from, for more than one reason, but they, they do, do, do not compare. However, um, Boca really, really did a good thing here. If you're just looking for a small, very small, very uh, no frills slip joint knife that'll just work, this is it. This one is just a bit better. I like it. Although I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> just by how much this one has impressed me, I wouldn't hold it past myself to get the compact um with my car to handle scales i mean i really like the slick g10 of this ones um that wasn't really a factor why i chose it but i knew i was gonna prefer the slick g10 to the normal texture g10 of the compact but uh yeah the the small one with my car to handle if i can ever find it, i'll just hold out and whenever they they, they appear uh maybe i can get one Pretty nice. Uh, let's see from what I did if uh, any edge would still remain. Now, normally, factory edges are not something you want to brag about. 
See that? I mean, just from the cutting that I did. Yeah, sure. Sisal rope is tough, and if you do a, a quick cut, you can go all the way through. But doing a slow cut like this, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna break. Keep in mind, this is not printer paper. Printer paper, and I keep saying this every time, <laughs> is uh, closer to this. And in this, the cut is still. You can still do a slow cut on this one. This is a bit thinner, so it'll require a sharper edge to go through. Not a bad edge, uh, but this is a factory edge, and this will, well, won't be, won't be the longest lasting edge. But yeah, that was the part two. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed my first experience with this knife um up next i'm probably going to sharpen it <laughs> but i'm gonna um see what the edge angle is and i'll add that in the description of both videos hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments suggestions let me know um there are a few people who are at fault for actually getting uh, me buying this knife um Stefan is one of them and uh yeah because just it kept showing up in his in his videos and just uh, at some point I said you know what I have to try it <laughs> so uh if you guys have any uh questions comments or suggestions I'd love to know thanks for watching uh have a great day and uh we'll see you in the next one bye